So if you don't know me, my name is Matt. It is true. I am, I am Tim's son. It's a, um, a blessing and a curse. Um, no, it's not. It's all blessing. It's been uh, easy sailing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really great to be here. Uh, it's great to be here at, at church. I, I love this church, and, and I've been coming along to, um, to church since I was five days old. <laughs> Um, so it's, uh, it's been great, and I, I do really love it here. And I love that there is a, a really close sense of family as well. Um, and it just feels like, uh, like home to me. Uh, and I see something in church. I, I see um, people's lives being changed and people being transformed. Uh, and I love that. And there's something about that that I, want, I just want to be involved in that. Uh, and if you kind of know one thing about me, my, my number one statement in life is that I want to see transformation in people's physical, mental, and spiritual lives. And that's what I'm all about. Um, so for me, um, that rolls out into my jobs as well. I have two jobs. I'm greedy. <laughs> I love a job, a glutton for punishment. Um, so my jobs, I, I work here at Woody's running a, a, the, a theology course um, called WTC, doing uh, graduate kind of degrees in, in theology. Um, so if anyone's interested in theology, come and chat to me. Uh, but my other job is I run food banks in, in North Bristol. Um, so I manage uh, food banks in North Bristol over five different sites. Um, and it's, it's brilliant. We're seeing um, proper change, proper transformation in people's lives. Um, and it's exciting. But I don't know what your, your um, week's been like this week. Um, but my week has been carnage. <laughs> Christmas is a great time. I absolutely love Christmas. But, but one thing about Christmas at Food Bank is that people get really generous, <laughs> which is wonderful on one hand. But on the other hand, we've had over eight tons of food arrive in the last two weeks. <laughs> It's been insane. And uh, so in the office, I, I, I work in an office over at Ebenezer Church up in Filton uh, and Hallfield kind of area. And we have had non-stop the doorbell ringing. Almost every 10 minutes, the doorbell rings. Someone comes in and said, oh, I just felt moved to donate to the food bank. And I go there the first 300 times. I go, thank you so much. That means so much. That's great. Um, but on Friday, when the doorbell rang at, at 6.30 um, p.m., I, I went to the door and I went, give it here. <laughs> <laughs> Send them away. Don't come back. We don't need your food. <laughs> no, I've got a very gracious face. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your food. But it's absolute carnage. Non-stop, the doorbell ringing, the phone ringing, running backwards and forwards. And on top of all these donations, the number of people coming to the food bank in the last two weeks over doubled. It's wild. So we had constant people coming in as well. <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, and then people are coming in, people are ringing on the doorbell saying, I've got food donations, they're coming in. People coming in saying, can I have some food? We're sitting them down, chatting to them. And then on top of that, <laughs> we thought it would be a good idea <laughs> to make Christmas hampers for people. <laughs> I know, it's, 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 it's actually great. Um, we, uh, we had a, a lovely team over one and a half days. We had uh, 60 people come in to help us make Christmas hampers. We had uh, Bristol City Women's Football Club came and helped us out. Then the next day, Bristol Rovers' first team came to help us out. They wouldn't come on the same day. That's okay. Um, <laughs> It all came in. It was, it was amazing. But, but slowly, more and more hampers were being requested from our, our partner agencies. And, and they were coming through every single kind of minute. There was another email saying, can we have a hamper? Can we have a hamper? As the words got out, more and more people were wanting Christmas hampers. On top of that, people were ringing on the doorbell saying, here's some food donations. On top of that, there were people ringing on the doorbell saying, can I have some food? And, and in the end, we made 262 Christmas hampers. Uh, I think there might be a picture there's a few of them. It's not a great picture. I know, it's, uh, oh, it's good. But in the moment, let me tell you, I was stressed out. <laughs> We're having 50-plus volunteers. Actually, um, 18 of them didn't turn up. <laughs> So we had the added pressure of people weren't coming along when we had planned all of this out. There were so many things going wrong. There were people still ringing on the doorbell, still giving us food, still asking for food. It was absolute chaos. 
I was stressed out. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are like when, when you have chaotic stuff going on <laughs> in your lives. And I know I, I could say I woke up early and I finished late, but I look around and I see people that wake up even earlier than me and finish even later than me. <laughs> I don't have any kids. I look at parents and I think, flip. <laughs> How do you do that? I'm slightly kind of stressed out because I've got to get into work for 7.30 and I come back at about 9. But being woken up at 3 in the morning, <laughs> I don't know what that's like. <laughs> I wonder what happens when you get stressed out. <laughs> for me, I, I go to a, a peaceful place. <laughs> Uh, and what my peaceful place looks like, it might be similar for you lot, is that my peaceful place looks like sitting on a bed, watching trashy telly, eating a full trifle. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm especially stressed out, what I do is I have a full trifle, and I'm saying it's one of the Sainsbury's own brand, trifle, 600 grams of trifle. I'll also get a, a, a share bag of M&Ms <laughs> and put them on the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's dreadful. It's really dreadful. And, that, and that's me. And, and, it's, and I'm not even joking. It's two minutes. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> it slips down. It's, it's, it's a horrible sight to watch. <laughs> a really horrible sight. Um, but that's me. <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm stressed out, that's my peaceful place. I don't know what your peaceful place is like. I chat to some people and their peaceful places, in their mind they'll go to a sunset, they'll be sitting on a beach, walking in meadows. Some people when they're stressed out will take a holiday, just get away. Some people just like to be on their own. I wonder what your peaceful place is like. See the, the reading that we're, we're looking at today is, um, is from Luke's Gospel, it's the, the story of the birth of Jesus and, and that's a story that is chaotic. I think my life is chaotic. <laughs> it was nothing to what was going on then. We had Mary and Joseph already in a, in a culture of, of um, oppression towards the Jews and, um, and injustice and, um, from Caesar Augustus. And on top of that, <laughs> Mary's pregnant out of wedlock. And it's not just, oh, that's a bit immoral. Actually, that's... Um, that's seen as kind of, you're an outcast. <laughs> uh, you're, you're not part of our community anymore. Is, is that serious? <laughs> and on top of that, she's probably in her third trimester when she's traveling all the way across to her homeland because Caesar Augustus wants to, to take a, a, a census of, of how many people are in his kingdom. <laughs> traveling 90 miles. <laughs> Whoa. That's stress, isn't it? That's chaos. <laughs> And that's where we're going to start the, the reading today. And it's in Luke's Gospel. It's um, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through to 14. Hopefully the words will come up on the screen. Here we go. So I'm just going to read it for us. So it said, That night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angels reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels praising God and saying, and this is going to be our key passage, glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. In other words, God's gift of his son Jesus brings peace to people who believe in him. And I wonder in my head, have we, have we got peace wrong? Have we replaced true peace with temporary escape? Do you know what I mean? For me, my, my peace when things are, are stressful is I want to get out. Get me out. Get me a trifle. But I wonder, are we replacing true peace with temporary escape? Because to me, that doesn't seem like the peace that we hear in the Bible. I wonder, what's the temporary escape for you guys? Where do you go to? Do you turn to validation 
Do you turn to social media? Do you turn to how many noughts there are on your paycheck? Do you talk to where? To, do you go to where you are um, placed in society? Do you take a holiday and literally just get out of the place? Because I don't think that's the peace that the Bible's talking about. So when I see Jesus being born, it's a, a baby. He's called the Prince of Peace. Is born into chaos. There seems to be peace in chaos. And that's something that we can have. And actually, that's what I think peace is. I, I think that peace is um, when we're in those, those chaotic and, and um, this week for me in that, in that crazy place, it's still having something about Jesus in me, which is peace. What's it mean for Jesus to be in us that gives us peace? And I don't think that's a peace that we can lose. I think that's a peace that we always have. It's always in us. Uh, and I talk to people and they say, and even I've said it, that, um, that I'm so stressed out, I've just lost it. I lost my peace, I lost my calm, I, I lost my rag, whatever you want to, to call it. But I don't think you're losing it. I think you're giving it away. Because it's always in you. When we accept Jesus in our lives, we accept the Prince of Peace into our lives. That's something that doesn't disappear. That's in us. See, the Prince of Peace, our God, is unmovable, unshakable, and he stays in you. And there's this other verse I thought we'd look at, and it's in John 16, verse 33. And, and hopefully it'll come up on the screen. It says this, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I don't know what you think, if you were one of the disciples and that's who Jesus was talking to then, what you would think in that situation. <laughs> when Jesus brings you all together, brings the gang together and he says, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because <laughs> I've overcome the world. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> Take heart. Okay, yeah. You just said, I'm going to go through trials and sorrows. I'm going to um, see friends uh, lost. I'm going to see um, people reject me at work. I'm going to see people lie to me. I'm going to see um, heartache, heartbreak. I'm going to be in a world that is, is crumbling. And we look around our world at the moment, we think, flip. What's going on? And Jesus says, take heart. <laughs> but I think the key here is in the, ver the little bit before. Because he says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. That's the key thing. <laughs> the peace isn't of the world. It isn't um, our escapes. It isn't my trifle. It isn't... Um, our ideas of, of sunsets and meadows, and although those things are great and, and, I, and I love those things, but I think we've got to be careful to not replace the peace that God gives us, the peace that we need with those temporary things. I love a walk on the beach. I love meadows. I'm not sure what a meadow is, but I love it. I love trifle. I'm still going to want to eat trifle. But when that replaces the peace that God is meant to fulfill, it's not going to work. The peace that we need is Jesus in us. So I wonder, do you need peace? I think we all do, don't we? There's always situations, I'm sure, as soon as you say, as soon as I say, think of something that's gone even this last week, you could think of a time where you needed peace. The reality is the peace is in you. It's God in you. I think this is a real perspective changer. And I think this could actually be a game changer for us. If we realize that actually uh, above everything is our relationship with God. 
above everything. We're going to face sorrows. We're going to face trials. There's going to be difficult times. I know next year at Food Bank, it's going to be as crazy, if not more. But above everything, through my relationship with God, that's the priority. Above anything and above everything, that peace that is in me, it supersedes everything. Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes it can feel um, difficult to understand what does it mean, Jesus in me, God in me. And, and the reality is Jesus isn't here now. He's not in a physical form here. But what Jesus says at, towards the end of his life is that he's going to leave someone who's greater than him. And that's going to be the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus here, Jesus now. And if we ask Jesus in us, what that means is we will have peace in us. We'll have the Prince of Peace in us. We can't lose that. And I just want to, to share one story, if that's all right, from Food Bank, of a practical example of when, when this peace that, that just surpasses all understanding doesn't, doesn't make sense, where it, that peace, which is Jesus, entered someone's life. And, and the story was at, at Food Bank, um, it was a couple of months ago, someone came in and, and they'd had, um, it was a, a guy and he had a, a really good job. Um, he was an engineer, um, he was doing very well, had a good wage, but he lost his job and struggled to find another one. Uh, and he had a family with three kids and, um, and he slowly couldn't be able to afford to pay the bills. He got into debt, got in trouble, uh, got, got more and more depressed. And, and for him, um, his peace um, was in alcohol. Uh, and so he turned to, um, to drinking a lot and um, to taking drugs as well. Uh, and eventually it got to such a state where, um, where he didn't have enough money to, to live in his house anymore. He had to move in with his parents. And he was the main breadwinner to so him and his wife and three kids living in his, his parents' house. And um, it just got really down. Uh, it got to a stage where he actually decided he was going to take his life. And... Um, and actually, in, in the process of doing that, his, uh, his young, in the process of, of taking his life, his young child, three years old, walked in and stopped him. And he'd arrived at our food bank in desperate need, in a horrible place, needing help. And one thing I love at Food Bank is that we can care for some physical needs. So we can say, there's going to be, um, we're going to look after your food. We're going to give you food. You're going to be fed. He couldn't afford to feed his, his kids. Him and his wife hadn't had food for a number of days. And, and he said, we can give you food. But actually, more than that, we want to help you out uh, at finding another job. So we want to invite you to job clubs. We want to help you sort out um, benefits. Um, but... Something that I, I love at Food Bank is that we want to um, give people hope and peace that lasts forever. And we want to see people's lives changed. Uh, and so I shared that with him. I, I said, actually, I believe that, that God knows you, God loves you, God sees you, and God wants to be with you in this situation. Uh, and I said, it's all right if I pray for you. Uh, and he wasn't from a Christian background, um, didn't know God, didn't know <laughs> Jesus, and he said, yeah, and that's the interesting thing, people in, in, in desperate situations are always after hope and peace, they're always after him, we have ultimate hope, we have ultimate peace, we've got to share it, and, and so I prayed for, for this guy, I just said, God, you know and love this guy, <laughs> he's your kid, I, I just pray that you'll be with him now. You give him your peace, you give him your hope, you fill him up with your Holy Spirit. And this guy, he actually come into the food bank um, and take a lot of drugs. His pupils were huge and, and he was dripping in sweat um, and not in a good place at all. But uh, as soon as I, I prayed, I felt that actually the Spirit had 
kind of gone into him and and his pupils went back to their normal size. His sweat completely stopped and his shoulders went down. He sighed. He opened his eyes and he said, I feel like there's hope. It's an incredible thing we've got. This hope inside us, this peace inside us, this, this gift at Christmas time when we, when we see it at most, when the angels were singing the songs, glory to God and peace on earth to all men who his favor rests. We've got that to share. And for this guy, he'd, he'd experienced that peace. It doesn't make any sense in his situation. How can he feel peace? How can he feel hope? I don't know. But he did, and I know it was from the Spirit. So that's my, my challenge for us, I suppose. It's right now, do you need peace? So I believe sometimes we, we lose the faith that actually in us is the Prince of Peace. In us we have all peace. <laughs> But we can pray for that. We can pray for more faith. We can pray to feel that, that peace and that hope. And that's what the angels were singing about. <laughs> that's an incredible story, isn't it? Lives being changed and transformed by Jesus. <laughs> that happens here and now today. So I wonder if, if even now, I guess we're going into communion, <laughs> um, if you feel like that life is just super stressful right now. Life's too much. There's too much going on. You've had a, a chaotic, crazy week. I wonder whether if you come forward at uh, uh, communion and just say, Jesus, I need to know your peace. But the challenge goes further than that because we don't just take that for ourselves. But it's our job to share that with everyone else. And the challenge is, who in your workplace, who in your family, who in your friends, who do you know that needs peace? I'm going to say probably everyone. We have the privilege of sharing that. And that's when we see transformation. That's when we see lives changed. This Christmas time is such an easy one to share Jesus. It's acceptable in all society, Christmas. People love it. Let's share our faith. Let's share that hope. Let's share that peace. You up for that? Yeah? Great. I'm up for it. I'm going to go for it big this Christmas. It's going to be big in the Dobson household, let me tell you. But I'm going to hand over now as we go into communion, I think. <laughs>